Hello, this is a tutorial on the pricing calculator being distributed by Ryanet Corporation. This calculator is basically a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet with formulas and calculations. While there is always a possibility of a formula error and there is no guarantee as to its accuracy, this calculator has been in use since 2006 in one version or another. Before you try it out, look over the entire form to become familiar with the contents. The top section is the calculator itself, and if you scroll down to the bottom, on the left is a note section, and on the right is a worksheet that we'll discuss shortly. Before I start, I want to discuss the terms primary and secondary. You may have already noticed them on the top and been a little bit confused. Don't think of primary as front and secondary as back. Primary is whatever side has the most colors to print. That's the side that carries the biggest impact in cost and labor. Secondary side, if there is one, is just the other side. So if you're printing a four color back and a one color front crest print, you're going to use the back for primary with four colors and the front as a secondary with one color. It's important to understand that concept before continuing. The most important numbers to supply to the calculator is what to use for the primary and secondary base charges. The calculator has a default of $2 for the primary and $1.50 for the secondary. This is probably a good starting point for a manual shop. These boxes will be used to cover the bulk of your printing expenses and profit. You can overtype these boxes for whatever business needs you require. Going back to the bottom, over here is a worksheet that you can use to try and develop the primary and secondary base charges for your shop. It's entirely optional, but to use it you have to have a good idea or can estimate how many prints you're going to make in a month along with your operating costs and your expected monthly profit. The numbers in the worksheet show a 5,000 primary and a 2,500 secondary uh, print. These numbers represent a shop printing 5,000 shirts on a one side and of that number 2,500 have a second side print. The rest of these boxes are for your estimated cost and anticipated profit. This worksheet could probably change in over a thousand ways, but I'll go through just one example. Let's say you're actually printing 10,000 one-sided prints in a month, and of that number, 2,000 have a second side print. So we'll go ahead and change the primary to 10,000, and the secondary to 2,000. And we'll leave the rest of the boxes as they are for right now. You can see that the numbers generated for the primary went to $1.17 and the secondary is $0.89. Cents. And these are the numbers you'd put into 18D and 19D above. Now, the sum of these expenses here and profit totals to $13,500. If you took the 10,000 shirts at the primary charge of $1.17, that's going to come to 11,700 and the 2,000 secondary at the 89 cents will come to $1,780. This all adds up to 13,480 so there's a, a small rounding difference of $20. This is just a worksheet to try and help you develop your primary and secondary numbers once you can estimate your monthly print volume and your expenses. As you can see, the more prints you produce, the better pricing you can offer to cover costs and still be competitive. The calculator has tier level pricing, meaning you could offer, possibly offer better pricing based on customer quantity. And these tiers are not rigid. You can put any order quantity into any pricing tier. If a price seems too low for a quantity of 75, in the 50 to 99 column, you could always use put the 75 in the 20 to 49 column. 
Conversely, if a price seems too high for 75 in the 50 to 99, you could always put the 75 in the 100 to 249 column to affect the difference. So let's take it for a spin. I'm going to go ahead and leave the defaults at $2 for the primary and dollar fit for the secondary. Remember, you can change any number in any blue colored box. So let's assume a print with four colors as a primary and two colors as a secondary. Remember, don't associate that with a front or a back. Since I've already got a Y here for the primary, I'm going to go ahead and change the quantity for four. I'm going to put a Y here for the secondary, and I'm going to go ahead and put a 2 as the quantity. You may have noticed an error pop up in D21 before I put the 2 in for the secondary colors. The calculator tries to make sure you have the correct pairings and displays a message on a mismatch. Don't use the delete key to remove the primary the secondary codes or you will get an error that suddenly looks like one you cannot get rid of. If that happens, just go back and put a space into those columns and press enter. I'll go ahead and use the delete key to show you an example of that. Uh, now I have the error. So I'll go back and use the space key on each one of these and the error goes away. So now I'll go ahead and reset this back to the Y and the 2 and we'll continue on. The screen prep charge is defaulted to 20, and that will be multiplied by the total number of colors printed. This is an optional field, and we'll go ahead and leave it at 20 for now, but you could delete it or raise it or lower it according to your needs. The ink charge of 15 cents is also optional, and that will be multiplied by the total number of colors printed and added to each print location. You probably noticed the ink costs are covered in the worksheet under the ink wash and emulsions box. So this entry could be used for the little extra electric or labor or just a charge for a little PETA, a little extra charge for those PETA customers. While flashing is not covered per se, it can be easily handled by just adjusting the primary or secondary base print charges. So if you need to recover a flash expense on a primary print location, and let's just say your flash charge is 15 cents, you just raise the primary to $2.15 and that would take care of that. The artwork charge is optional and it will be spread across the calculator for whatever you put into it. The sales tax is also optional and you can put it in if you need to charge sales tax. So let's go through a pricing exercise. Let's say you have to quote a job for 85 black shirts with three colors on the back and two colors on the front. We've already got the Y in for the primary, and we have a quantity of 4, so we'll change that to 3. And we already have the Y for the secondary with a quantity of 2. We'll say that black shirts cost you $2.09 a piece, so we'll make this $2.09. And let's say you want to charge 75% markup to cover shipping charges. Right now it's set for 50 so we'll just change this to 175. And we'll leave the $20 for the screen prep and the $15 for the ink charge. Now we'll put the 85 quantity in the 50 to 99 section. This comes to $13.26 per shirt. Sounds a little bit high, but don't forget you're only printing 85 shirts and you have a total of five colors you're printing. But if it seems too high and you don't want to quote that to your customer, you can always put the 85 into the next tier. And now you can quote the same shirt at 923. You have a lot of flexibility in this, so what you quote is entirely up to you. I want to briefly cover the concept of tier level pricing. Basically the same math is used for each one of the tiers with a premium applied or a discount applied for each tier level based, based on the values that are on line 19. Note that the 50 to 99 column has a 50% markup and the 250 to 499 has a 10% discount. If you feel like this markup is too high for the 50 to 99 you want to only go with the 25% you, all you have to do is change this to 1.25 
and you now have effected a 25% increase for that tier level. If you want to offer more than a 10% discount for $250 to $499, and you wanted to make that say 20%, we'll just make this a .80, and now you have a 20% break on that tier. Well, that's really about it. You won't be able to change any of the calculation boxes, so you can't inadvertently alter the spreadsheet by mistake. But you can change anything you want in the blue boxes for your business needs. I'll go ahead and close for now and hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial. Wishing you the best of luck in your new business venture.